Thank you. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, good morning, church. Good morning. You make me repeat it every single Sunday. You should know better by now. Just kidding. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? It's good to have everybody here. Uh, why don't you stand to your feet? If you have a song, a, a, a praise book in front of you, it's all the multicolored ones in the, in the pews. Um, turn to song number 25. You may not need the words, but this song is called, We Have Come Into This House. is called Lord I lift your name on high.
You may be seated, church. Thank you, ladies. Good morning, church. Good morning. Amen. So good to see everyone here on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's March already. Amen. Amen. We see some new visitors with us today as well. God bless you for being here. Y'all help me out this morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. That's right. Amen. Give the Lord a praise this morning. Amen. Got you up next to the church this morning. Morning. That's right. Amen. Praise his name. I got it. You got the microphone. Thank you. I'm going to bring the microphone around to you if you just raise your hand and hear a testimony, a praise report, Nick prayer request. All right. I appreciate that. And one of my first. Need a little. We don't think we got enough volume on this. Okay, you got enough volume okay. there. I want to wish Helen Bainbridge a birthday out to her. She's in the UK, Cumbria, UK. So happy birthday, happy dear birthday. Helen. Y'all say happy birthday. <laughs> Amen. Yes. And we appreciate her so much. Bless her heart. And also Loretta May's birthday. I'll give her a hand. And Edna's birthday. I'll raise her hand over there. Edna's birthday. Loretta's was yesterday, right? And your, Edna's is tomorrow? Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. Amen. And uh, happy birthday to you. Yes. I expect everybody already knows about Betty Wilson. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Facebook and everything tells it all sometime. Yeah. I talked to Lee last night for a long time. I'd been talking to Tina off and on since they took her back to the hospital. Um, Lee just come out and told me last night that she's not doing well. No, not really. She's not doing well. It's from one thing to the other, and it's a lot on her, her age and everything. But God is good. Yes, he is. God can bring her out, and I'm just claiming yep. it. That God's going to bring her out and bring her yep. back home and yep. bring her back over here to play that piano for Amen. us. Amen. Yes, indeed. Amen. Yep. Pray for the family. Yep. Pray for them. Pray for the family. They are not, well, it's hard. You know, it's hard. Yeah, You're right. It's, it's hard. Um, and Chris and David this morning are not here because it's going to snow tomorrow and they got a roof that they need to get uh, the Ooh. paper on before it's, it, it, rains, it yeah. snows and rains in that house. Oh that they were working on, so they had to do that this morning. Isn't that great? Look at this. Yeah, I've got a bunch of children today. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I know you are proud over there, aren't you, lady? Amen. <laughs> know the feeling. Yeah. Keep yeah. praying for Stacy and um, Charlie, that guy that uh, the, David met, Charlie mm -hmm. Gibson. Um, just keep praying for him. Yes. And I'm trying to think of anybody else. It seems like, oh, yeah, Mrs. Cash. Mm -hmm. Keep praying for yes, her. Yes. And uh, David told me he's doing, she's doing a little bit yes, uh, better. Yes, a lot better. Thank that you. is such an answer to prayer. Yes, it is. And so and just keep all that. that family in mind, too. Yes, indeed. Keep me in your prayers, and I'm still all together in one piece. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Amen. You know, arthritis is not, he's really not no respect of persons, you no. know. But anyway. Um, I love being here. I love you all, and I thank you for your prayers. Glad you're here. And uh, it's a beautiful day outside, and snow is coming tomorrow, so. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let's Friends, pray it away. Let's enough. pray it away. Yeah. Okay. We all have to move cautiously tomorrow. <laughs> well, bless you. Yes, I'd like to thank Jesus for my salvation, first of all. And yeah. second of all, I have a friend with me here. Her name is Lee. Hi, Lee. Lee, right this here. is my church family. Church family, this is... I got a couple. Um, there's a family member of ours who had a car accident. I guess it was last night. Um, he's in the hospital, a lot of broken bones, in and out of consciousness. His name's Timmy. Uh, I don't really know anymore. I, I'm, I'm assuming he'll be okay, but it's still a lot of physical injuries. So lift him up in prayer. And on a lighter note, the school, we've been doing a lot of events and we've raised a lot of money to fix the building. Yes. And it's, it's a long, yeah, so sufficient help. Yeah. it's a lot of work and we still got a lot more money to raise. But um, I just want to ask that you pray we can continue to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you know of anyone who has any type of building materials, paint, anything. paint brushes, anything that would be useful for uh, free labor. Yeah, we have that too. Anything that could be donated um, towards the building to fix it, 
or if you know somebody who, who is um, capable of doing some of this difficult work, please send them my way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So thank you for that. Yes. Yes. Uh, I have a friend of mine, uh, as I, some of you know, I do girls' fast pitch lessons. And uh, Tuesday, I've got a mom that's, uh, that's going in the hospital to have a, a vertebrae removed in Bless her neck. Him. It's a fourth one. They're going to have to put a halo on her in the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. So I just want to lift her up in prayer this morning. She's around 40 years old, so she's pretty young for all that to be happening. And uh, yeah. they're real godly family, real yeah. good people. Amen. Just keep them in prayer. Yes, indeed. Her name is Donna, 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 Donna Sands. Please remember Kenny and Lisa, they are sick this morning. Mary and her whole house is sick. And uh, Cindy Boley uh, is sick and is, they've been asking for prayer. I think just about all of Alta Vista is gone this morning. <laughs> yeah. So please remember them in your prayers. And I was trying to remember everybody. Uh, Nanette Glazer is not feeling yes, well. Yes. She's not been feeling well for a few weeks now, and I've been yeah. trying to talk her into going to the doctor. I think I finally did it. She's going to go this week. Man, she's hard-headed about doing <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> Nobody likes to go to the doctor, no. I know. But she needs to go and be checked out, you know. Plus, keep on praying for her brother, Charlie Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, he brother. is at home. Um, he's got leukemia. Yeah. Keep on praying for him, too. He's a sweet man. God really, can really fix everything. Gentleman. God can yes. fix it all. Yes, indeed. Yeah, he's a really great guy. Yes. Um, Richard Hackett was in the emergency room with Mickey last night yeah. for quite a while. Yeah. Um, she had had quite a severe rash um, since Wednesday. And when initially they first went in there, they thought she just had hives and was giving them medications. Well, the medications weren't working. So he posted me back and he said, well, it looks like it's going to be a long night. So they hooked her up to an IV and started giving her Benadryl and steroids. And then they come to find out that it was a reaction to a new medication that they had wow. put her on. Wow. So uh, Richard said that she had a pretty restful night last night. She had some medications to pick up yeah. um, at the pharmacy today. So she seems to be doing better. Um, I seen that Mark... Um, had posted that his brother-in-law had been um, moved down to yes. another room yes. and that Lord his brother-in-law is doing much, much better. Much so better. absolutely praise yeah. the Lord for that. And I'd like to ask for prayer for James. He's not been doing well Glad at hear, all. James. He's been having a lot of problems with everything that has been going on from his accident, from where the electricity decided to drop, knock the bamboozles Ouch. out of him. <laughs> so just keep him in prayer yes. for everything that he's going on. And um, I would like to stand in for Betty today yes, to be prayed over, yes. prayed over if I could, please. So yes. um, do you know yet if, whether or not they're allowing visitors? Because I know when I spoke to Tina yesterday, they were not allowing visitors she's at that time. I, she's in ICU, so. so she's still in, I knew she was still in ICU, but I didn't yeah. know because I know that with my grandfather, they would, you know, sometimes yeah, allow visitors. I'm not so. real sure, but. Cause I know probably I, catch them yeah. in the waiting room and then go from there. Because I know when I spoke with Tina that her blood pressure was still really low and they yes. were still trying to get the fluid and all out from yes. around her heart. So, yeah. So, but yeah, I would like to stand in for Betty if I could, please. Yeah, definitely. And keep my going. family in prayer also, please. Yes, amen. God bless you. I actually have a praise report. A few months ago, I asked everybody to keep my friend Becky in prayer. She was having problems with her pregnancy. Well, three days ago, she gave birth to a little boy, eight oh. pounds, 11 ounces. Yeah. And they have already yeah. her and him her home. That's good. And he's doing really good. I've already seen him. And there's pictures up on Facebook of him. And so Amen. thank you, everybody, for the prayers. Amen. Amen. What else? Said? Got you here. Amen. Uh, 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 would you all continue to pray for Matt? Uh, Matt, well, he gets such... Uh, low quality sleep that he stays in bed all the time trying to sleep yeah. and he's uh, uh yesterday uh he went to bed at i mean day four yesterday he went to bed at 7 30 at night and didn't get up until 4 30 the next afternoon Ooh, that's a long day <laughs> so uh i don't know what to do about it i, I just have to leave it up to god because we tried everything and uh I've just got to turn it over to him now. Amen. Amen. God will know. Lord bless him. Anything else? It's so good to see Patricia and her daughter here. I know what you went through. Amen. Yeah. I'm so glad. I praise the Lord that we're here this morning Amen. and that we're both relatively unharmed, sore, bruised, yeah. uh, lots of bruises. 
and um, strain muscles. But if for those of you on Facebook that have seen the pictures, looking at the car, yeah. Miracle. God had his hand on us. Yeah, he did. Amen. Amen. That because Amen. especially her side of the car, the roof yeah. was completely caved in. And I just praise the Lord that she walked away. Amen. And um, this is God. Amen. <laughs> good. Amen. And another good news. Yeah, got my fingers crossed. I know everybody's been praying. I was kind of concerned. Oh, now I don't have a car. And the other car kept going, so we couldn't charge it on their insurance. Mm -hmm. Debbie pointed something out to me, and I called my insurance company. And it's possible that the uninsured motorist fee that we pay will um, cover it. They'll call and let me know tomorrow. Yes. Um, and God. My, I put a very special prayer request. I didn't want it out on Facebook. Um, but I'm going to tell you guys, my niece is 11 years old. I'm yeah. I don't know. Listen, it's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. Um, she tried to commit suicide, and her oh, mother yeah. said that it was okay to let you guys know. Yeah. And just pray for her yes, and her family. Yes, indeed. will. And and they um, there's a lot of personal situation going on there, and and just she wants you guys to pray that um, that they make it through it together and yeah. okay. Yes, indeed. Well, bless them. Bless them. Glad you're here. Amen. Yeah. Where's your daddy gonna come up to see you? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Well, I'm just thrilled to see Joyce here and her yes. family. Yes, yeah. yeah, all yeah. family and some children. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank everybody for the traveling mercy prayers yesterday. We had a beautiful trip. Amen. It was awesome. It was good to see the family. And, yes. And uh, we all got back in one piece. And um, <coughs> I just want to pray that the snow holds off just a week. Just a week. And then it can snow all at once. David's got exams next week, ah. midterms. And yeah, it's the time. I ask y'all to pray for that, that mm -hmm. we're able to get back and forth okay. And yes. It's the great. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Amen. Let's see, there was one more. Um, I want y'all, I'd asked y'all to keep Timothy and Caitlin and their family. Yes. They've got an important decision coming up. Um, yeah. And also Joshua and Terry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, bless them. Anyone else? Anyone else? Do you have an unspoken on your heart this morning? I know we all do. We lift it to our Heavenly Father. And thank him as well for all his blessings. Why don't we ask if anybody needs to be Please. anointed thank or to come on forward now. Let's come forward now. If you now. need to be anointed or you want to stand in for someone, need someone to stand in for Cindy this morning. Uh, her daughter called and asked if someone would do that too. Okay, come on down. And uh, anybody else that needs to be anointed, just come, come right on down and then we will pray over everybody. Amen. Nikki, if you would... Go around and anoint anyone here that needs to be, please, sir. Just stand right up front if you need to be anointed, whatever the situation. God knows what it is. Nikki's going to come around and anoint each of you. Everybody standing up front wants to be anointed, I think. Who else? Everybody, everybody standing right up front, I think, here does.
raise your hand if you need to be anointed. Right over here. Okay. Many times Satan whispered, there is no need to try.
sitting down a few minutes listening with our ears and the heart. So let's go around and clap your hands, greet someone near you, help us out on this song. It's one of our favorites here. Go ahead. Rather than Walk around. Click it on. Yeah. <laughs> Walk around me, Jesus. Walk around. Walk around me, Jesus. Walk around. Walk around me, Jesus. Walk around. bedside, told us the Lord had been walking all around. In the night she closed her eyes, we could hear her singing, walk around me Jesus, walk around. Walk around me Jesus, walk around, walk around me Jesus, walk around, walk around me Jesus. Walk around, walk around my bedside, Lord. When I am praying, walk around. When I am praying, walk around. When I am praying, walk around, walk around my bedside, It's a solid rock tradition. Amen. Thank you, Pam. Amen. I um yeah. I posted on I posted on Facebook. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Amen. God is good. I posted on Amen. Facebook the other <laughs> evening of a, a most unusual thing in a church called a running spell. Any of y'all yeah. see that? And when yeah. the singer got up there, people started running up and down the aisles, and one man did a somersault, dove into the baptismal pool, and just kept running. And uh, now, since we're all old and feeble here, we have a walking spell, okay? We don't have a running spell. But uh, let me say, if the Lord gets a hold to you, go ahead and have one. It don't make no difference to us, okay? 
Anyway. Stays. What happens this, in the church stays in the church. That's right. What happens right. in Solid Rock, Rock stays, stays in, in Solid, Solid Rock. Rock. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's true. It gets on YouTube. <laughs> that's true. Those are some of my TV I would videos. like to welcome... <laughs> All of the people that are watching by TV as well, I understand that we are now on television five times a week. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, um, Amen. God bless those who are watching. A live TV, which is on Chantel Cable 7, is in every market except Lynchburg and, and Amherst County. And mm -hmm. so pray that they get in that area yeah, as well. Yes. But we are hearing all the way from Withville mm -hmm. and Blackstone and mm -hmm. places that people are watching the broadcast mm -hmm. on television. It's a 30 minute one, so you gotta kinda cram it in. Yeah. And then on yeah. YouTube, the dozens of people that watch that every week. And I was checking the other day during our church's broadcast on radio, we are now on three stations. We're on WRMV in Madison Heights. We're on WPAK and an F, with an FM translator, two stations, FM and AM in Farmville. Mm -hmm. And then we're worldwide on our website, oh, which is actually heard on three websites. Mm -hmm. But I noticed the other day that um, regularly, every day when the Solid Rock broadcast comes on, Beijing China's listening. Wow. Yeah, cool. That's wild, isn't it? Yeah. Beijing, China. Yeah. Well, bless How they even know we are here is a miracle of God. I, that's all Amen. I can say. So cool. Well, anyway, this particular song we're going to do, uh, this is particularly for you, Loretta. Yeah. And I want to send this out to those that are watching by TV that has lost a loved one. I have a, a friend named Liz that lost both of her parents in the last 15 months yeah. and her dad just this last week. And so we want to send this out to everybody in here that understands what it feels like to lose a loved one. And then, yeah. here we go. That's not the one. Next one. <laughs> yeah. Not Wish quite that here. one. Wish but that's what here. they're doing in heaven to celebrate, yeah. amen. Okay, this one's but gonna come truly? in a little hot, so watch. Yeah, this oh. one's truly. There we go. I don't they want to say to us. That's fine. I can just see them walking on the shores of heaven. Praising the Lord, watching the tide roll. Talk to me now. Here's what you say to me. Wish you were here. It's such a beautiful place. Wish you were here. Nothing but clear, sunny. Walking on the shores together 
They're talking with Jesus, safe and secure in His love. Friends and loved ones walking in heavenly peace. And I know if they could talk to me now, here's what they say to you were here. It's such a beautiful place. Wish you were here. Nothing but clear sunny days. It never rains. No one complains. We haven't seen Having a great time, wish you were here. It never rains, no one complains. We haven't seen a tear. We're having a great time. We wish you were here. Well, if you have your, huh? What'd you say? Okay, all right. I better make sure it's clear back here before I do anything. If you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 14. When I came in today, I had no idea that the Sunday school lesson was on the exact same thing that I'm preaching on. The songs are on the exact same thing that I'm preaching on. So I know that God has a message in this for everybody this morning. I want to talk about going home. Yesterday while I was out riding, I went, I went home. Well, what does that mean? That doesn't make any sense, does it? I went back to the place that I was raised since I was three years old up until I was 19. For some strange reason, the 16 years that I spent in that little area had a bigger impact on me than any other time in my life. I, I had a really great childhood. I got to admit that I did. But when I drove through there, oh my goodness, the whole neighborhood just about was in ruins. My old house was still there, but it didn't look like my old house. I looked over in the driveway and my 1970 yellow duster was not there anymore. <laughs> my mama's clothesline was gone. I don't even know if there is such a thing anymore. And the tree that I used to climb in had grown about 30 feet higher. The school that I walked across the field to go to was closed down and the ball field there is no longer used anymore. And all of the great neighbors that we had are dead. Have I depressed you enough yet? Well, there's more. The church up the street was still there, but I doubt that a single soul would know who I was if I walked in there. All the houses down the street from me were either burnt down or boarded up and the yards were overgrown. The store that I walked to was gone and there were trees where the store used to be that were that big around. The train station was gone. Not one person in the neighborhood that lives there now no doubt has ever heard of me. And so there's not much left of my old neighborhood. And like they say, you can't go home again. Then I went to the hospital yesterday and I saw people that I know well that are old and feeble now. Once young and vibrant, and it seemed like just yesterday they were young. Anybody ever listen to Bob Seger? Come on now, don't get all spiritual, admit that you do. 
I like that song he sings called Like a Rock. And the last verse of the thing was he goes, 20 years, where'd it go? You know, and I, I was watching it on TV the other night and I hollered, how about 40 years? Mm. Yeah. Time is flying, folks. And the world that many of us grew up in is gone and not recognizable. It really isn't. Many of our friends and loved ones are gone and many of you have just said goodbye recently to one or more of them and you're still hurting over it. But I stand before you this morning declaring that that is not all there is. This is not all there is. I stand before you telling you of a truth that there is a place. A place that everybody can call home one day and a place that never gets old and run down. You don't have to fix it. Nothing falls apart. A place where people never get old and run down. No sickness, no crying, no, no one dies. A place where no one has forgotten you. There are no graveyards, no hospitals, and you're young and strong forever. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus was telling us of his Father's house, mansions for all of those who believe. And he's building it right now, because as soon as he gets done, he's coming for us. Some of, some of us he already has come for because he is finished with their place. And he's building it now and he's coming to take us back there. But there are three things I want you to understand that are really awesome that will be of a surety that you will enjoy in heaven. And that's what I'm talking about this morning, going home to heaven. Whether you believe it or not, this is not our home. And every day when I look at the news, I've come to realize more and more that that's so true. It's not our home. We are here temporarily. We have a real home that we will never have to leave. We will never have to live in fear. We will never have to worry about what's going to happen the next day and on and on and on. And that's our real home. One of the things that is going to be so awesome, and I heard Mary talking about it this morning and we were singing about it and all these other things that we will enjoy in heaven. Number one is regeneration. Regeneration. Yes. Now I know that many of y'all that are 18 and you're, you feel like a rock now, you're going to feel like a noodle later on. <laughs> Once that age starts kicking in, boy, I'm going to tell you something. It changes things. It changes your outlook. Time becomes precious. Health becomes precious. But in heaven, we will all experience regeneration. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which have died, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus or have died in Jesus, God will bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep or which have died. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. 
We read them at funerals all the time, but I think we need to read it during a regular worship service because it is something real. It's something that's going to happen. It's something to look forward to. There is coming a day when all people that are believers will hear the sound of a trumpet and will disappear off of the face of this earth. That's called the rapture of the church. Now, what is going to happen when we rise, when we come out, if we're in the grave or if we're standing on the ground or wherever we may be, what is going to happen at that moment? There's going to be a drastic change. There's going to be a regeneration and you will not be the same anymore. You will not be, you will not be going to heaven with heart trouble, with diabetes, with any kind of crippling disease or any kind of sickness whatsoever. 1 Corinthians 15, 15. He says, Now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. We are all living in corrupted bodies. Every one of us are living in corrupted bodies. And so something has to change in order for us to make it to that new home. And that is regeneration. He says, behold, I show you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpets shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption this mortal shall put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the grave does not have victory over a believer they may be in there right now but that is not all there is one day we will get a new body now, I realize there are some of you that are happy with what you have right now. But every morning when I wake up, the first thing when I get out to bed, there's these gigantic mirrors on my closet. And I, I look at them in horror. And then I look back at the bed and I'll go, Donna is a brave woman. I do. And, whew. But one of these days, I'm going to get my youth back. One of these days, I may be, Jesus died at 33. I'll settle for 33 forever. How about the rest of y'all? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yes, sir. Whatever age it may be, we will have a new body. There will be no more disease, no more aging, no more trouble in the bones whatsoever. Nothing. All of that's going to be gone away. Some of y'all, you used to have a full head of hair. I saw, I wish Kenny was here this morning. Bless his heart, he's sick. I saw a picture of him when he first got married to Lisa. He had a full head of black hair all the way down his back. He did. You wouldn't even know Kenny. And I look around at some of y'all and I remember what your hair looked like 30 years ago. And some of your hair has turned gray and some of it has just turned loose. <laughs> I've looked at a picture of myself when I was about 20 years old. And Andy looked like my twin brother. Son, this is your destiny right here. Okay. Oh, he's going to be sick all day about that. <laughs> Maybe you can avoid it and not do the stupid things that I do to wind up looking like this. Now, you got a chance at it, okay? <laughs> Regeneration, that's the first thing that we're going to enjoy in heaven. The next thing that I'm really, really looking for, and as the days grow, go by rather, I look forward to it even more, is reassociation. Reassociation. We will see our friends and loved ones that knew the Lord and have gone on before us. Matthew 8, 11, it says, Jesus said, I say to you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. All those folks that you've read about in the Bible, you will see them. You will be able to talk to them. 
Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, But now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, for now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I also am known. Somebody asked Dr. Lakin one time, When I get to heaven, will I know my loved ones? He said, Well, I hate to think that when I get to heaven that I'll be more ignorant then than I am now. <laughs> Of course you will know your loved ones and your friends and your spouses and all the people that have gone on. And they will know you as soon as your feet hit the shore up there. Can you imagine? There's a, a song that, that Bill Martin uh, used to sing about walking. What is it? I'm reaching for your hand. What is it? The far side banks of Jordan. As soon as you get there, there will be people in heaven waiting for you. That you have missed so sorely. And you'll never have to say goodbye to them again. You'll never have to say goodbye to them again. And if we are here when Jesus comes back, you will see what Jude chapter 1 and verse 4 said. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied saying, Behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints that are in heaven. And you will see the ones when they come back. You'll meet them in the air. When they come back with the Lord. Yes. Who are you looking forward to. To seeing rather in heaven. I've got friends from all the way back years ago. That some of them died in accidents. And I've got grandparents. And I've got loved ones. And I, I've got all these people that I'm looking so forward. Many of their church members are gone now. You know and, and they left such an impression upon everybody in here. And we miss them terribly. But one day we will be reunited with them again. Amen. Something to look forward to. Regeneration, reassociation, and thirdly, and the biggest of all, is the Savior, Savior's commendation. Yes. All of the stuff that we have tried to do for the Lord down here, that so often we have not been thanked for it, and nor have we asked for it. But no one, some, maybe you feel like no one has recognized the efforts that you have done to serve God. Well, that's all right. Don't worry about it. The one who is important really is the one that sees all of it anyway. And he that sees in secret, it said, shall reward you openly. 1 Peter 5, 4 said, And then the chief shepherd shall appear, and you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. We're going to get crowned one day for what we have done. And it says that this crown fades not away. It doesn't rust. It doesn't fade. It doesn't get old. Paul was about ready to die on Nero's chopping block for preaching the gospel. And he said in 2 Timothy 4, 6, For I am now ready to be offered... And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. Have you fought a good fight? Have you done that? He said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but also unto all them that love his appearing. A crown has been reserved for you, for what you are doing for the Lord here. And he sees, and it doesn't matter whether anybody else cares, whatever you did on this earth for the Lord, he saw, and he's the one that's going to reward you. My favorite is in Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. You know, all of us that are Christians are going to stand in a special judgment one day. Not the great white throne judgment where the lost will go. But it's called the Bema Seat of Christ. And back during the, all the different sports contests back, that they had back in those days in the Roman Colosseums and all that. The judge of the Olympics, if you will, would sit on an elevated seat called a Bema Seat. And all of those who won the races and won the different contests that they were in would stand before him and he would judge them for what they did and then give them crowns 
and give crowns to those who succeeded and who won. And, and, and so Jesus said that one day we will appear before Christ for what we have done while we were down here as Christians. And we will be rewarded accordingly. And it says the Lord will say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. And then he will say to you, Enter into the joy of your Lord. What a wonderful thing to be able to hear finally one day when we stand before him, he'll look at you and say, well done, enter into the joy of your Lord. Regeneration, reassociation, and the Savior's commendation. Well, then comes the big question, who gets to go? One time in church, a pastor looked at the congregation and said, how many of y'all want to go to heaven? And the entire church raised their hand except one 10-year-old boy in the back. And that really bothered the pastor. And so at the end of the service, he went back there and said, son, aren't you saved? And he said, yes, sir, I am, pastor. He said, don't you love the Lord? He said, yes, I do. And he said, well, how come you didn't raise your hand when I said, how many of y'all want to go to heaven? He said, I thought you were getting up a load for this evening. <laughs> but what if the question was asked, Do you, are you ready? Do you want to go? What would you say? Yeah. Here comes the question, then how do I get there? John 14, Jesus continued from where we started reading. He said, Jesus said, where I go, you know, and the way, you know. And Thomas, that was always doubting, always questioning everything, said unto him, Lord, we don't know where you go, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I don't care what any talk show host or what any sorry TV preacher tells you. There isn't but one way to heaven and that is through Jesus Christ. Period. The only way. Jesus said and John continued, then Jesus said to them, verily, verily, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. I want you to understand this morning that Jesus died for the sins that you can't repay. You owe a debt to God that you cannot pay. And the, the penalty is too great. And so Jesus stepped in and paid that penalty for you. So if you accept him as your Lord and Savior and repent of your sins, you can be saved and be one of those that has that new home. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon upon him for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's you, that's me, that's anybody. It doesn't matter whether you're black, white, yellow, green, red, purple, Jew, Gentile, whatever you may be. That is for you. Jesus warns in Revelation 22 that there are some folks that aren't going to get in. People that have fooling themselves and thinking that they can live for the devil and do whatever they want and go strolling through the gates of heaven have been deceived. 
Revelation 22, 12 says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates of the city. And then he lists people that are out. He said, For without are dogs. Now that don't mean your dog won't be there. That ain't what he's talking about. The word there has the idea of a male prostitute. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. And I pray this morning that you are not one of those of which the scripture says without. Because you can change that today. You can make a difference and you can get saved to where you'll be one of those that are going within. Only those though who have been redeemed have a right to heaven. We're going to go to the Lord's table in just a few minutes. But I want to give you an opportunity to get things right between you and God. And I'm going to ask right now if a couple of our ministers would come down here and stand to receive anybody that needs to come. Number one, if you have never been saved, if you have never accepted Christ,